Welcome everyone. This is the mock interview series with me, Rajneesh Gupta and Jamin Pathak. I'm those who don't know. I'm security consultant. Uh, I've worked in building security solutions on open source, especially, and work with multiple clients to perform the audit. And I also help the individuals to get into cybersecurity role. All right, with me, I have Jamin Pathak. He's the secure, senior security engineer at uh, Tetra Global. And uh, we are going to do the mock interview session on Checkpoint Firewall. This is for complete beginners. So let's get started. Hi, Jamin. How are you? I'm good, Rajesh. How are you? I'm good, too. Thank you so much, Jamin. So Rajesh, let's get started with the interview questions on Checkpoint. Mm -hmm. My first question is, what is your experience with Checkpoint Firewall? Sure, absolutely. So I've worked pretty much in terms of deployment of Checkpoint Firewall. I've worked in deploying the Checkpoint Firewall, even the legacy uh, 12,000 series appliances, some virtual appliances, uh, even the latest appliance with the uh, you know uh, latest code as well. So I worked in terms of deployment of a firewall, creating security rules, NAT rule, uh, anti-bot rule, IPS rule on Checkpoint also worked in upgrading the checkpoint firewall uh, managing the checkpoint firewall from the management station by taking the console access uh, I, I i worked even in i do have a basic understanding uh, about uh, a check, other product of checkpoint like cloud product uh, threat intelligence solutions as well and even i worked a little with mobility uh, remote access VPN solutions. I do have a good understanding about how to check the logs on checkpoint, troubleshooting something on the checkpoint, taking the TCP dump file as well. So that that's pretty much I do have an experience about. I am not really an expert. I do have uh, some medium level experience and troubleshooting experience with it. Yeah. Okay. Then, as this, can you please tell me? the main components of checkpoint firewall sure so for this i'll show my screen as well so uh yeah so checkpoint is basically having three major components and uh, this is security gateway management server and smart console security gateway is actually your firewall it's actually the enforcement point uh, the hardware firewall, it can be installed in the branch office on data center. So that's the one which, which basically perform all the uh, actions, okay? Management station is like the centralizer responsible for the centralized configuration of all the firewalls in the network. Monitoring, troubleshooting, uh, reporting, everything is done from the management server. Why it is needed is just imagine if we have, let's say maybe 200 branch office. So it would be very difficult to manage probably 100 or 200 policies on each and every individual firewalls by logging in uh, individually and implementing those policy. It could be, it would definitely be a cumbersome task, but at the same time, we will never know, uh, you know, uh, what policy exists somewhere which which doesn't exist. So it, it's very, it becomes very difficult to maintain a baseline configuration. So with smart management server, it is uh, it is simplified. Smart console is actually a GUI. It's it's it is the it is the software. It's a, a client software which you install on your computer, uh, on your Windows machine, and through which you can get access to the management server. Okay, so that's how uh, that these are the major component of it. So yeah. Okay, perfect. So. We talked about just now about the three components. Then mm -hmm. let's talk about the deployment mode. What are the difference between stand on deployment and distributed deployment? Sure. Uh, so when we talk about the standalone deployment, uh, you know, uh, standalone deployment is the mode where uh, both our security management server that we just discussed and the security gateways are deployed on the same platform, on the same hardware itself. But if we talk about the distributed mode, distributed deployment uh, is a method in which the uh, the management server and the smart uh, and sorry and the uh, you know gateway and the security gateways are installed on a different platform altogether. 
and this is what recommended for all the uh, businesses and this is what recommended by the checkpoint and this deployment is called a uh, three tier architecture as well where each component is installed on a separate platform so we have our security gateway installed on uh, is is it's actually a different platform altogether running on different branch offices then we have our management server that could be it's a software right and management server is a software which might be installed on a data center on a, an individual or independent server maybe right maybe centos or any other server and then finally we have our smart console which might be running on our personal computer maybe our laptop or desktop right from there we get access to the management server so this is the three tier architecture <laughs> okay so rajesh let's talk about now some security rules what mm -hmm. are the still rules in checkpoint firewall Okay, stealth rule is very simple. It's basically to prevent any users from connecting directly to the security gateway. So we can create certain rules to block and access uh, to the security gateway directly. Uh, we can uh, usually we want uh, everyone to access from the management server, but in case if we really want someone in case of emergency out of band connection or someone. is there locally and want to access the gateway on those situation we can allow uh, an access for certain user from a specific ip address so the restriction of this access is called stealth rule yeah perfect done okay perfect so rajesh uh, tell me about uh, what are the explicit and implied rules in checkpoint firewall sure absolutely so explicit rules are the one which are manually configured uh rules by the firewall admin itself so if you and me go on the firewall and we have a request for from certain users to allow access uh, for internet or maybe allow access for ftp application so if we create those rules manually those are explicit rule right when when uh, there is another set of rules which we call implied rule these are default rules these are used as the fallback mechanism uh, these are less restrictive but if none of the explicit rules are matched then this will come into the picture so yeah that that's the difference okay then what is stick in checkpoint oh yes yeah. so stick is very interesting um uh, stick is basically used as the uh, communication and authentication channel a mutual authentication between checkpoint devices so you can see in this diagram so whenever we establish the sick uh you know this is basically establish the secure channel this is secure internal communication that is established between the uh management station management server and between the gateway itself okay so we can go to the individual checkpoint gateway and from there we can um, uh set up the configuration and setting for uh, for its session with the management station and even we can do it from the management uh, servers as well we can verify we can troubleshoot and we can test the connection you can see the secure internal communication you when you see it, currently it is uninitialized you can see in the communication the status and all the parameters for it okay so that's the secure uh, secure internal communication this is this is completely encrypted communication between checkpoint devices to share any sensitive information um with the management station to retrieve those information all the key management uh, all the encryption happens it provides you better integrity check as well so yeah it's that's why it is a secure internal uh, communication so yeah okay got it so uh -huh. next question is on secure excel core excel and cluster excel what uh -huh. do you mean by all those sure absolutely so uh secure axel is basically secure acceleration so um with secure axel we can maximize the performance of firewall is by you know is is actually way we improve the overall throughput by several cpu intensive operations so if we if we know that our firewall need more cpu intensive task that should be performed and should be handled by the virtual software rather than the firewall corner itself in that case we can enable or of go for the secure axel uh you know options 
Uh, next, we have cluster Excel. Now, this is like uh, providing the high availability. This is where we uh, allow firewall to be in in the you know cluster, where in spite of one firewall acting, we can have a cluster of firewall of identical checkpoint gateway, which can be connected in a way that if one checkpoint gateway fails, the another replaces it immediately. So checkpoint cluster basically maintains the uh, you know high availability and load sharing as well. And this is even better in case, let's say, if we have a, you know, a asymmetric routing issue as well. Maybe we have a lot of uh, big network and we never know from where to traffic coming in and going out. So in that situation also, it, it becomes very helpful. And whenever uh, the gateway or the network goes down, the connection seamlessly uh, redirected to the backup or the secondary firewall, which and uh, cluster Excel also distribute the traffic among the other redundant gateways as well. Okay. Now the third kind of uh, solution is the core Excel. Now this is this is uh, this is kind of uh, delivering a multi-core ex acceleration. Just the way if let's say we have certain application which require multiple virtual core in the system. Uh, so uh, maybe it's a CPU intensive work. So in those situations we can create. Uh, add an additional core for a certain pro activity in spite of running a single process core. All instances are a complete firewall kernel that handles and inspect the traffic, uh, you know, at the same moment of time. So it at the end enhances the gateway performance, and each uh, firewall instance in that case processes the traffic through the same interface and uh, applies the same gateway security policy as well. So. That that's the difference, the differences between them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then what is checkpoint IPS? Sure, absolutely. So checkpoint IPS is uh, you know intrusion prevention system, and uh, it's basically helps. Uh, it's basically detect any intrusion and prevent it from occurring. It okay. So it it. It actually closely monitor all these malicious or probably I would say suspicious anomalous uh, behavior, and if it finds any, you know, uh, any uh, malicious activity, it will block them from happening. For example, if someone is sending, uh, is trying to establish any reverse shell or DDoS attack attempt, brute force attack attempt, so IPS can detect those attempts, or maybe there is known CVE, right? Uh, in which in which maybe let's say someone is trying to establish a metasploit kernel or performing a map scanning in that case the uh, our checkpoint ips can detect that and block those connections immediately so that that's checkpoint ips it's altogether a different blade uh, in checkpoint so yeah okay so when you say blade what are the checkpoint blades are there Sure, absolutely. So checkpoint has got multiple blades. Blades are like an independent modular or uh, you know a modular uh, software or add-on subscription, I would say. So there are multiple subscription or features that we can implement. So as you can say, this is the uh, you know we have firewall. The, these are all threat prevention, antivirus, anti-bot, threat emulation, anti-spam. These are all different different blades that uh, works other than that other than this as well we have different blades that could be implemented as well so based on this uh, we can enable new features uh, onto checkpoint so this is all new features these are different type of security policies that we have it, these are all software blades okay so do we require license for that yes absolutely we do require license for that okay perfect then how do you manage firewall rule base? Sure, absolutely. So managing the firewall rule base is very important because uh, you know if we if once we once we use the smart console to access uh, our management station, we get the smart dashboard. And smart dashboard is something like this where we can create security rules, we can create NAT rule and IPS rules, everything into it, right? So on the rule base, we have an option of creating sections. So it's always good to create sections based on different use cases. Let's say we want to create a rule base. Uh, we, we can create a section of DMZ maybe. 
as you can see in the diagram, we have created a rule base for uh, section. These are in the yellow, you see the section. So we have a section for DMZ. We have section for data center access, access to internet, VPN, uh, security, gateway access. So that way we organize the rules. If let's say we have 200 rules, so it would be very difficult to go individually and see which one exists and which one is not, right? So with creating a section, we are very clear if let's say one user want to access the internet. So it become very easy. I just have to look for access to internet section and I, I can create a rule under it. So I can select any rule and I can click, uh, click on add a rule below and then I can add a rule immediately. So that's the one thing we should really follow. Uh, we should also make sure there's no rule which is shadowing the other rules. And uh, we should have uh, a, a more specific rules on the top. So that will always take effect over the, you know, uh, over the below rule. So it, we should always make sure the more specific rules exist on the top of the other. And uh, try to avoid, I mean, we should also try to be very specific about certain rules. Uh, in security, we follow least privilege access. This is also a part of Zero Trust as well, where we make sure we give only required access to any users. Let's say if user want to access google.com. Now we have to be very you know conscious about it. If the user want to access google.com, we can be even sure that which apps he want to access in Google. And I should only allow this specific user only, maybe by using the its username or by maybe the IP address. And maybe if he just want to Google Docs, so I can call the app, app ID of, uh, or sorry, the application ID of that user or application control. So I can go for Google Docs, Google Cheat, and that specific feature itself. So that way I can create a more specific rule and achieve least privilege uh, in the environment. So yeah. Okay. So Rajnish, this is all I have on the checkpoint file. Thank you for your time. All right. So. Yep. Thank you so much, Jamin. And for those who are interested to uh, learn Checkpoint from scratch with Home Lab and with hands-on training, the link is in the description. The uh, training will be delivered by Jamin and with me as well. Okay. So let me know if you have any questions. We would love to answer that. Thank you.